A federal judge is expected to rule within the next week on whether or not to lift the Title 42 immigration policy that allows the expulsion of migrants from the U.S. because of the pandemic. The CDC's decision to lift the law on May 23rd is being challenged. For more, let's bring in CBS News immigration reporter Camilo Montoya Galvez. He's at the border in McAllen, Texas. Camilo, it is great to see you. Great to see you out on the road. You spoke today with several DHS officials, among them Chief Medical Officer Dr. Pratesh Gandhi, while touring a Border Patrol facility. I want to play a little of what he said to you about the federal government's vaccine program for migrants. What we're able to do here is give a dose of vaccine that will prevent downstream use of hospitals, right? I mean, if we're able to ensure that people get their first dose here and they have some modicum of uh, pr protection, um, we're able to ensure that hospital beds don't get used in towns that may need that extra bed, right? And so, you know, we're building it with this COVID vaccine here, and, uh, and I'm hopeful later this year we'll be able to add on the flu vaccine. What else did you learn, Camilo, and why did they want to show this to you? Hi, Ed. That's an excellent question. For the first time during the coronavirus pandemic, the U.S. is systematically vaccinating migrants against COVID-19 here at the U.S.-Mexico border. Before this massive operation launch in late March, vaccinations of migrants were limited to HHS shelters for unaccompanied children and long-term ICE detention centers. Now, most migrants who are not expelled to Mexico or to their home country under those Title 42 restrictions are being offered COVID-19 vaccination if they have no prior proof of COVID-19 vaccination in their home countries. We know that this is one of the ways, Ed, that the Department of Homeland Security is preparing to lift Title 42 because, as you know, Ed, the stated justification for this pandemic policy is to prevent potentially infectious migrants from spreading COVID-19 in border facilities and in the broader U.S. Do you have a sense of how many vaccines are given out each day, at least there at McAllen? Dr. Pratesh Gandhi told us that it varies. Sometimes it's a dozen, sometimes it's hundreds. We know that thousands of migrants have been vaccinated so far since late March. You also had a one-on-one -on -one interview today with Secretary Mayorkas, Alejandro Mayorkas, the Homeland Security Secretary. Asked him a little mm -hmm. bit about Title 42 and its future. Here's what he had to say. So, Camilo, we are indeed experiencing historic numbers of encounters at the border. Part of that, we have to remember, is the fact that under Title 42, that public health authority that is in effect right now, there is a, a great deal of repeated encounters of the same person because they are not placed in enforcement proceedings and removed, but rather they're merely expelled. And so we see uh, the same people trying over and over again. So I want to, the, the numbers are not the number of unique individuals, but rather the number of pure encounters. So we have a number of different efforts underway to ensure that people do not take the dangerous journey, do not place their lives in the hands of exploiting uh, smugglers. We spoke about all the consequence regime expanded expedited removal, which means we're, we're removing people more quickly without access to the court system. Uh, we are um, accelerating the asylum adjudication process, the asylum judgment process, without compromising due process. We are bringing criminal prosecutions to bear. But very importantly as well, we're working with our partners to the south so that they manage their borders they grant humanitarian relief under their laws, and if individuals do not qualify for humanitarian relief under their laws, then they are removed from their country. And so it's a regional approach to a regional challenge. Interesting that he talks about pure encounters or the idea that one person may have crossed over mm. multiple times, they get kicked right back, but there's nothing that's stopping that person from trying again a few days or weeks later. Uh, the judge that's hearing this case, Camilo, says he's going to make his decision on Title 42 by Monday. If he agrees to block mm -hmm. its termination, how are deportations going to change along the U.S.-Mexico border in the coming months? If Title 42 is lifted and as planned on Monday next week, all migrants here arriving at the U.S.-Mexico border will be processed under regular immigration laws, which would mean that the DHS would have to screen them 
for asylum if they ask for humanitarian protection. It means that more migrants will need to be processed. DHS will need to expand its migrant holding capacity and deploy more asylum officers to interview more migrants who are asking for protection. And as you heard during our interview, Secretary Mayorkas acknowledged that there are historic levels of migration here at the U.S.-Mexico border. But he also told me, Ed, that if some of these efforts like increased prosecutions and expedited removal flights to Central America and this overhaul of the asylum system take shape and are effective, they could see a reduction in border apprehensions in the coming months. But again, it is still an open question, Ed, whether these policies and these efforts will have their intended effect. And we don't know yet, as you mentioned, whether this judge will allow the administration to end Title 42 as planned on May 23rd. Camilo Montoya Galvez covers immigration policy for CBS News, and he does it so well. And you know why I know that, Camilo? Because I hear from folks who work at other newspapers here in town, other television networks, and they say, oh, yeah, Camilo, he knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing. And it's good to see you down there on the border bringing us this story. Thank you so much for taking the time. Travel safely. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Ed.